Welcome to Deep Cuff Channel. Ukrainian army continues its advance on the front thanks to the powerful operations it carried out against the Russian troops. In this context, according to the latest statement made by the Chief of General Staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Russia has increased its attacks in Barkiv, Donetsk and Zaporizhia regions. Accordingly, in the last 24 hours, in addition to nine missiles and 27 airstrikes against these three regions, Russia carried out a total of 79 attacks using multi-barrel rocket launcher systems. According to military analysts, most of these Russian attacks were successfully repelled by the Ukrainian defense forces. After the successful defense of the Ukrainian army, it was stated that the missile units of the Ukrainian army launched an operation in a total of 11 regions of Russia. Center of the attacks of the Ukrainian army seems to be the Kremlin region for now. This region is seen by Russia and Ukraine as the critical center of the war. This is because it is the gateway to the strategic city of Bakhmut in the eastern region of Crimea. Because Russia knows this, it carries out violent attacks on this region. According to the Ukrainian Air Force Command, Russia has launched a major air operation to weaken the Ukrainian forces in this area. It was reported that three K-52 helicopters, two Su-25 fighter jets and many unmanned aerial vehicles participated in the operation. However, this Russian attack was completely repulsed thanks to the success of the Ukrainian air defense systems. It is stated that Russia lost three Ka-52 helicopters in just three minutes in these attacks. Making a statement right after this event, the Ukrainian general staff reported statistics on Russian casualties. Accordingly, Russia lost 690 soldiers, two tanks, eight armored combat vehicles, two artillery systems, four helicopters, two warplanes, and three tactical unmanned aerial vehicles in the last 24 hours. It is stated that Russian President Vladimir Putin was very angry with these losses in his army and gave many new orders to Valery Gerasimov, who commanded the Ukrainian war. In this context, General Gerasimov announced that he dismissed Colonel Mikhail Teplinsky, who had a critical role in the war. Teplinsky's dismissal is directly related to Russia's losses. Immediately after this development, the Independent War Studies Institute made critical statements about the future of war. According to the ISW, Russia is planning a major counterattack next spring. This makes sense in Russia's changes in command as well as in the preparations it has made for its army. According to the head of Kharkiv province, Oleg Sinigabov, Russia launched an intense missile attack on the city of Kapiansk. While it is not known with which systems the attack was carried out, Russian ground troops were also sent to the region. But the key point here is the weakness of Russia's elite shadow army. Currently, Russia is trying to seize many regions in the Donbass's oblast, especially Bakhmut, using this shadow army, which it attaches great importance to. Biggest X factor here is the weather conditions in Ukraine. Ground troops are currently struggling to enter ground warfare. When we look at Ukraine, this situation is easier with the armored vehicles provided by the Western allies, but we cannot say the same for Russia. In this context, the USA decided to accelerate the transfer of M2 Bradley armored infantry vehicles, which it promised to supply to Ukraine. Several officials at the Pentagon stated that this transfer could happen sooner than planned. Since this situation will give a serious advantage to the Ukrainian army, Russia wants to use Belarus to solve this crisis. This is the main reason why Russia has recently installed a large number of anti-aircraft and anti-tank systems on the Belarusian-Ukrainian border. However, NATO countries are also fully prepared to respond to the increasing military activities of Russia on Belarus. According to the breaking news, the Netherlands will deploy eight F-35 fighter jets to the border with Belarus. Allegedly, these planes are currently going to Poland. Deployment of F-35 aircraft in the region is more of a political move from a military point of view. Deterrent these planes will create in the region will cause Russia to reconsider its next move. It is also known that the Ukrainian army has long wanted warplanes from the West. Of course, 
the plane to be sent to Ukraine will not be the F-35, but there are very important developments in this regard. According to the latest statement of Ukraine's foreign minister, Mitro Kuliba, the plane issue is no longer a dead end. These statements of Kuliba brought to the agenda that Western countries promised to transfer aircraft to Ukraine. Although there is no official statement about the solution of this problem at the moment, the information coming from the backstage shows that this need will be met in the near future. In addition, not only the Netherlands, but also Estonia is making some political and military moves against Russia. We reported the other day that Estonia has decided to send new military aid to Ukraine. Now, according to the latest news, Estonia will restrict the operational capability of Russian ships in the Gulf of Finland. This has also been officially confirmed by the Estonian Foreign Ministry. Shortly after the announcement of this move by Estonia, the meeting between German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg was completed, making a statement after the meeting. The German defense minister said that the issue of sending tanks to Ukraine has not been resolved yet. Speaking right after Pistorius' statements, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said he hoped this problem would be resolved as soon as possible. Immediately after the statements made by the duo, it was announced that 17 Leopard 2 of 5 tanks were on their way to Poland. The fact that these tanks go to Poland may mean that these tanks will be transferred to Ukraine in the near future. In the recent allegations, it was said that Ukraine could receive delivery from these tanks. However, it is not clear yet. Apart from these claims, another claim is about the Abrams tanks used by the US military. In the latest news, it is stated that Russia wants to see these tanks in Ukraine. Russian authorities are trying to mock this legendary tank in their own way. In fact, it is clear that Russia is doing a reverse psychology on this issue. Russian military analysts say in their propaganda statements that these tanks will not be successful in Ukraine. However, this is actually not the case. Abrams tanks are known as the most advanced and modern tanks of their generation. I'm sure Russia was afraid to see these tanks in front of them. After these news, the USA and Israel started to intimidate their enemies with the historical exercise they started. According to CNN's report, the United States and Israel have started the largest joint military exercise in history. 100 American fighter jets, bombers and refueling planes will participate in the Juniproke exercise and will fly with 42 Israeli planes. Attack group of the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier George Bush is also participating in exercises that will cover all combat areas, including space and radio electronic warfare. In addition, Juniperoke will house approximately 6,500 American and 1,100 Israeli soldiers. CNN states that these exercises are a clear signal to Iran and emphasizes the strength of the U.S.-Israel alliance. As long as the U.S. Army stands by Ukraine, the winner of the war is clear. Victory to Ukraine. We will continue to monitor the world and especially Ukraine. We'll see what happens in the next few days. We have reached the end of another video. You can support us by liking the video. You can easily follow new videos by subscribing. I wish you all a war-free day. See you.